The areas covered in specific gender terms by the general comment on adolescence go from ensuring disaggregated data and statistics, and we still call for it, as you can <laughs> see from today, by gender, enacting national legislation explicitly forbidding gender discrimination, law reform in both the civil and penal spheres, such as equal age for marriage at minimum 18 years uh, of age, it's not enough to say that girls can marry at 16, because if boys can marry at 18, we are discriminating. Um, uh, and delinking the age of criminal responsibility to puberty, that otherwise targets girls very harshly. Um, also, it covered access to secondary education, domestic work, often invisible and exploitative, and sexual and reproductive health, in particular in relation to early and arranged marriages, early pregnancies, abortions, sexual abuse and exploitation, STDs and HIV AIDS. In fact, these are basically the areas that had been covered by the committee in in, that have been covered by the committee in its examination of state parties' reports since the general comment in 2003. If you do a search for the words adolescent girls or young girls in the Human Rights Index of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, which is the one that provides the secretariat to the committees, you know, the, the, the treaty bodies, committees, um, relative to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, it confirms that the references that are most numerous but um, are uh, essentially, uh, essentially sexual and reproductive health for girls and labor and juvenile justice for boys. It's really interesting to see how it comes out. You know, the computer just throws it out uh, to you. And how could it be very different, really, when this is the basic information that comes through from the member states, from the, part, the state parties' reports. Just to mention my own country, Chile, an inventory of the government's offer of policies and programs for children compiled with the help of UNICEF in 2009, we're talking last year, we're talking pres woman president. Hmm? showed that for boys it hovered around the offer the offer of public, the public offer, hovered around the school or the jails, and for girls around the school and the health clinic. And if the offer, in other words, the policy, plus the resources, is placed there, it is clear that the perception of the problem is there. Nevertheless, more recently, I would say in the last couple of years, the committee has begun to express concern for mental health suicide rates, nutritional disorders, increasing gender-based violence, smoking, alcohol consumption, and substance abuse, in general lifestyles of adolescents, both girls and boys. Also opportunities to be heard and different forms of participation. The right to confidentiality and privacy and the need for culturally sensitive services are also concerns that are beginning to come uh, to be expressed by the committee, and, f and the committee is beginning to formulate recommendations to the governments about it, about these issues. Um, the calls for better and disaggregated statistics and analysis for specific gender policies continue to be always present in the committee's recommendations with little progress being made in terms of the response by governments, uh, follow-up and implementation. Another subject is migration, refugees, and adolescent-headed households that have also appeared in the committee's examination. A call for an environment free of violence for women and girls is becoming common. Despite this broadening of the committee's perspectives on adolescents in general and girls in particular, more is required to not only respond to the state reports, but also to guide further in the interpretation and application of the CRC. It helps enormously that the composition of the committee has been for some time now equal in gender terms. No? This is a window of opportunity to open up the subject and establish new guidelines for the committee's work regarding the adolescent girl. But beware, and my <coughs> colleague from Costa Rica, I was just telling her that 
we have just ha finished a wonderful period of four years of the presidency of Michel Bachelet, where policies for, I mean, gender policies, uh, uh, policies for women, um, social protection in general, the balance between labor, work, women's work and family, the incorporation of men into family issues, all of these things have been enacted into law and into, into policy and there's been tremendous change. Parity in government, equality of numbers at least, no? or in, in decision making positions in government was, she, she did it from day one. As soon as the new president, no, a man, took office, of course, parity disappeared. <laughs> so, I mean, let's not chant victory here just because we, are, we have parity in the committee, you know. It may disappear. The Joint Task Force uh, CRC CEDAW is a good step in this, uh, in this direction. In fact, Maria Regina Tavares de Silva this morning was calling for a joint task force between CRC and CEDAW committees to precisely to develop the whole question of the uh, uh, overlapping and the need for overlapping between on the question of adolescent girls between the two uh, treaty bodies. Um, we already have, this is good news, Maria Regina, we already have a joint task force CRC CDOR that is supported by UNICEF and UNFPA. Um, it is presently engaged in an analysis of harmful practices, initially with regard to female genital mutilation, but not only. It will cover the broad spectrum of harmful practices in general, and not only traditional harmful practices. Uh, the idea is to come up with a joint general comment, and this will be probably a very powerful document, a joint comment no, by both committees, CEDAW and CRC, to guide the reporting uh, by state parties to both CEDAW and CRC committees and the implementation of their recommendations thereafter. Uh, and let me speak a little bit about how we see this general comment evolving. Rather than using a coercive approach to eradicating bad practices, the idea is to promote a positive vision of girls and women, very much in line with, with what was being said today, encouraging their active role in society and enabling the community to maintain traditional values such as the love and protection of young girls without having to marry girls early or genitally cut them to make them socially acceptable. Likewise, a bottom-up approach to legislative reform is to be encouraged, driven by public concerns and an increasing consensus for the protection of girls and women linked to broader policy issues and to the abandonment of harmful practice altogether. This is in line with evidence collected by UNICEF and UNFPA that suggests that legislative measures on harmful practices must be developed taking into consideration the social, cultural, political and historical context onto which they are superimposed. Otherwise, reactions may be even more negative, like continuing with the practice in secrecy and hiring unqualified practitioners. This brief review from the committee's perspective shows that there is movement, but clearly there is also widespread widespread lack of understanding of the significance of women's rights to children's well-being, and in particular to breaking the cycle of discrimination against girls. Therefore, the challenge is to articulate the mutually reinforcing nature of rights and women, uh, of rights of women and children, and I fully agree there with Maria Regina uh, Tavares de Silva. Uh, 